Ah, shit. Here we go again. Now this is the plan. Get your ass to Mars. Then go to the Hilton and flash that Brubaker ID at the desk. That's all there's to it. Just do what I tell you, and we can nail that son of a bitch who fucked you and me. I'm counting on you, buddy. Don't let me down. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at something that's not available just yet. However, don't get depressed. That doesn't mean you can't order it. It just means that it's on pre-order and it's not physically available yet. And I love doing these videos because it gives you a chance to see something brand new and you still have the opportunity to get in on the order instead of showing you something that I really, really love and then I had to say, sorry, they're all sold out, they're not available, you can't get one. This is a lot more fun to do. This is the AT Knives Halt in Mars Valley Fat Carbon. These are actually OEM'd by Best Tech. This is a completely new brand by Lewis Farber, who is known as Addicted to Knives here on YouTube. And this is the brand's first offering. Now, if you haven't had the chance, go check out his YouTube channel, get an idea of what he's all about and see what he likes, and it'll give you an idea of why he went this route for this design. Now, the website is atknives.net. I'll be sure to put that here on the screen. And the pre-order date was back in January. However, the ordering is still open as of the time of this recording. I just physically went to the website just now, checked it out, clicked the pre-order button, and it did take it to the shopping cart, so it was still accepting orders, at least for this variation, so you should be good. Now, as I go through the website, there was a description for why he chose to name the knife Holt, and I'm going to read it off for you real quickly here, because I actually have made some notes here off to the side says, the name HALT isn't just a title, it's an acronym deeply rooted in the recovery and mental health community, representing four key stressors. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Those are my four nicknames, by the way. <laughs> this knife is more than just a tool. It serves as a meaningful reminder of the essential aspects of well-being in the journey of recovery and mental health management. So... Obviously, he's had uh, a lot that he's gone through in his life if he's using that as the key identifiers for his knife. And it probably means he knows how to persevere. He knows how to get through some things. And I think that that's going to resonate with a lot of people. Because, you know, a lot of times we talk about the people behind the knives, whether it's the knife makers or the knife designers. And a lot of times, we just want to support good people. And that's actually kind of how this video came about with me. I have no personal connection with Lewis. We don't really know each other that well. Um, I had gotten a message from our good mutual friend, Kevin, Lefty EDC. And he says, hey, I've got this really cool knife here that I was checking out. You want to check it out also? I'm like, yeah, who's making that? And he says, oh, it's a, it's a personal friend of mine. He's a really, really good guy. I really like the knife, so I think it's going to be successful, and I'd love to see it go out to other people's channels and help spread the word and hopefully make it even more of a success. So I said, sure, let me check it out. And that's how I ended up with it. And it's funny because I went to send Lewis a DM on Instagram, and as I opened up the DM window, it showed that we had had a prior message from a couple of years ago, he had asked me for some input and advice on getting his first knife made. And I just think it's funny that everything, you know, everything kind of circles back around. And now here he is with his very first knife and doing it with a great brand like Best Tech. Best Tech does phenomenal quality, great finishing work, great grinds. They pulled off this super thin hollow grind so so well 
did a great job on the belt satin finish that's on here as well. Let me give you a close-up on that. It looks great all the way around. I think that was originally a good design because you can see that, but the execution of it is pretty damn fantastic too. Now it feels pretty good in the hands. In a second I'm going to tell you what the specs and dimensions and everything are, but while it's not a very large knife, it fits comfortably into my hand. I kind of like how the uh, the size plays out. And of course, as you guys know, I love both sheep's foot blades and Warncliffe blades, so this sheep's foot really does it for me. I think it's a it's a fantastic blade choice. Now, let's get into those specs. Let me move this over here so we can put all that information right there. Overall length of 7.77 inches with a blade length of 3.48, so just a hair under three and a half inches. Your blade stock is 120 thou thick, and it's done in magna cut at 61 to 63 Rockwell with a frame thickness of 0.47 inches, 470 thou, so just under a half an inch on the thickness of the frame. So it's not going to be a super big pocket hog. It is running on ceramic bearings, by the way, with steel washers backing that up, and that allows... Number one, for the knife to be as smooth as humanly possible. And two, the bearings won't be wearing additionally into the pockets milled into the titanium bolsters. They've got the support of having steel on steel, which is a great idea. Now, one of the things I really like about this, besides obviously the action, because I can't stop flicking and playing with it, is I really like the lock bar tension or the liner lock tension, I should say. It's not too harsh, but it's just enough to really seat that detent ball to give you the perfect detent for flicking open. Yes, you can slow roll it with your thumb, and I haven't tried, but yep, yep, you can thumb flick it as well. So however you choose to open, you are set. And I am so thankful that there's no stupid front flipper tang sticking up out of this thing. God, I'm getting so tired of that. What I am surprised about is, with the way that the bolster is shaped, I'm surprised that he didn't do the South African style front flipper where the tang of the blade comes all the way around and it's super jimped where you just roll across the top. A lot of people call them top flippers. But before front flippers were a thing, the South Africans were calling those front flippers. Anyway. So that would have been kind of neat. You could have also done the, uh, the finger flick off the back of there as well. So maybe that's something he can look forward to for maybe version two, if this is successful enough to warrant a sequel. Now let's talk about some of the planned changes from this prototype to the production. First, and this is the first thing I was going to nail this design on, is the pocket clip is going to be relocated so that it better aligns with the pivot. You see how it's kind of angled downward? That's annoying as hell. It has screwed with my minor OCD for quite a while now since I've had this in the house. And uh, that is going to be straighter, and it's going to be pointing at the pivot. And he has asked Best Tech to do a better job on the plunge grind here so there's a little bit more room so that the heel of the blade doesn't start showing a smiley or a square notch as somebody goes to resharpen that blade. It is a little close, but I don't know anybody personally that makes that a deal breaker. You hear people talking about it on the internet all the time, and yeah, okay, whatever. Um, if you know how to sharpen a knife properly, it's not really that big of a deal. Not going to get into that whole argument. I've gotten into it. Every time I've ever said that on a video, somebody wants to argue it in the comments, and I'm dumb enough to entertain them by going back and forth on it. But yes, somebody that's very talented at sharpening doesn't need a sharpening notch, and they can deal with a shallow plunge like this. We're just going to let that go. But it is something that he feels is important, and probably also it's going to keep people off of his back about it. So he wants to make sure his customers are as happy as possible and have nothing to complain about. So he's asked Best Tech 
to adjust the way they do the plunge on that so that it's a little bit more self-service friendly, I suppose, is the best way to put it. Uh, you've got a smooth titanium backspacer on there. Uh, it does end right back here. It does not come up and around the tip. But that doesn't matter because even though they have brought the, the blade all the way completely to the end of the frame, you're in no danger of snagging that tip whatsoever. I suppose if I were to make any constructive criticism on this, it would be that they could really soften the edge of that blade window a little bit better. It's already a little bit chamfered. I think they could they could chamfer it a little bit more or even just kind of hit it with uh, Scotch-Brite on the way out of that window and it would take a little bit of the edge off of it because it's just going to end up tearing off, you know, shredding up your, uh, your fingernail as you do that reverse flick. It's not egregious. It's not a huge deal. It's not something that if he messaged me and said, hey, I, I, I heard what you said, but that's probably not going to change. I wouldn't hate on the knife after that. It's just something that if I had my choice, I'd love to see that happen, but it's not really a huge deal. It has a really nice bitey edge. They did a great job. They got down super thin on that edge. That is going to be a super slicey knife. Feels really good in the hand. It's a great size. Again, seven, a little over seven and three quarter inches in the overall length. So it's not as big as a lot of knives that you probably have in your collection. The, the spine has a little bit of a harsh edge to it as well. So yeah, I'd like to see them knock that down a little bit. Again, not a huge deal. It's just, if you're going to come out here and critique a knife and you're going to review a knife, you have to look at every little thing. As a buyer, I would notice it, and I'd say I wish it was another way. However, it wouldn't be enough to prevent me from wanting to have it. So that's the way that I look at it. Is it a perfect knife? No, and I don't really think that there is anything that you could call a perfect knife. I mean, I, I could even sit out here with a Todd Rexford, and if I looked at it long enough and felt it long enough... I might find one or two things that maybe I'd want to see different, and that doesn't mean you'd want to see it any different, but it would just be personal choice. But I have handled only a couple of knives in my life that I would say were perfect, and uh, you're certainly not going to expect 100% perfection for $275 on a Best Tech made knife. I think that what he's made here is a really good EDC. It's lightweight. It's not too thick. It's not too big. It's not cumbersome at all. It's going to be very easy to carry. It's got a very useful blade profile. It's going to be really, really great uh, for slicing through things because of the way the blade intersects with the tip. Really, really good for cutting and slicing. I think anybody that gets their hands on one is probably going to fall in love with it. You've got the Mars Valley fat carbon, the purple haze fat carbon as options. And also, for some reason, green canvas micarta. I, I don't know why people are still working with canvas micarta. I'll never understand it. But that's also an option if you like that kind of look. Me, I would probably go for the Purple Haze just because I'm a Purple Haze fanatic. I have a few knives in Purple Haze, and I've always loved it. I like the Mars Valley as well. I definitely do. But there's something about purple, man. You kind of always have to lean a little bit more toward the color of royalty, I think. Anyway, that's all personal preference. That's it for me. I'm out of here for now, guys. Thank you, as always, for joining me. Check out my second channel, which is the same as this channel, but very, very abbreviated reviews, usually around the five-minute mark. So I'll end up doing this video in five minutes or less if I'm able to. And the times that you don't have time to sit down and watch an entire video by me, you can watch a short form video by me. And as I hinted to in a previous video, I am soon going to be launching a third channel, which will be all things EDC, not just knives, not just limiting myself to that anymore. It's going to be a lot of various things that we in the EDC community are interested in. And I'll try to give you the 
most thorough feedback I possibly can on the items that I choose to review. Anyway, I'm out of here for now. I'll see you on the next video.